Hallo, hier ist Thor Alexander und der Chris. Hallo Leute. Wir sind immer noch in der Dominikanischen Republik unterwegs. Das dauert hier wahrscheinlich ein bisschen länger. Und wir haben jetzt einen interessanten Gast, der heißt Mr. Mr. T von Educated Traveler. Erzähl mal ein bisschen was zu ihm. Ja, Tony ist einer der härtesten Umsetzer. Alles, was gegen das System ist, er war äh, sehr stark, sehr stark ausschlaggebend für den Bereich der Suhr Kabarette, dass die Leute die Maske nicht akzeptiert haben im Zeitlauf der Pandemie und sonstiges auch, aber werdet ihr gleich mehr hören, wenn wir ein Interview haben. Also bleibt dran, bis gleich. Hallo, hier ist Karl Alexander von defi.getz und ich bin heute mit Mr. T. Hallo, Mr. T. Hallo. Where we are? In English? Where we are? Das well, well, heutige Interview ist in Englisch, weil wir sind nicht in Europa. Ihr wisst ja, ich bin ja quasi auf Tournee. Yeah. Und heute, where we are? And we are in Sassua, North Coast, Dominican Republic. And sun is shining. Ja. Yeah. Good weather, good. Pretty much. This is not we wake up to every day. Ah, okay. It's it's very boring. Yeah. Every day bad weather, blue sky, or we say Bavarian weather. Yeah. White clouds and blue sky. Like the the black of Bavarian. Yeah. Sometimes we fall accidentally into a nice swimming pool. Oh, it's very really dangerous. Yeah. Okay, but the the topic today is talking about decentral money. Um especially about Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. You use Bitcoin? I do, yeah. Well, I'm probably I don't know, a couple of years or three years, maybe. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, but on a small scale, I'm involved. You're, uh, I kind of, it was through a situation where my banks during this pandemic um, suddenly rejected my incoming payments and uh, then I even got signed for it having been rejected, it was completely ever critical. So I had to contact my merchant processor mm -hmm. who processes the Visa, MasterCard and all that and say, could you pay me out in, say, Bitcoin? And he said, yeah, no problem. So I started getting paid directly from that company to me. There was no middleman that could mess with my money. So, uh, and so your cards are in your own? Normally, to a Visa or Mastercard? Is no, no, I'm talking about for the business I do here, I sell consultancy and tours, etc. So, uh, maybe if somebody wants to pay my business by Visa or Mastercard, you know, they do that, but then the money has to be paid out. And then they got sent to the banks here, they rejected it. And they did a lot of stupid things with people during this pandemic. And how you, you came to the idea? To, uh, to get the payment in Bitcoin? Well, I, I had met these really nice uh, chaps around town who talked about Bitcoin. I got, so they started educating me about it, that it's between the, the, the payer and the payee. You know, it's, there's no middleman and you can uh, have a direct transaction and within half an hour... To an hour, as it's a bigger amount, you can have an approval, and boom, the money's in your wallet. And and this is uh, lightning, which took the other wallet. Uh, it could be within seconds, you know, that maybe we could. And with wallet, do you use? Uh, trust wallet, trust wallet on your phone or on in the sign one end. Oh, then uh, you like to use. Do you use a hardware wallet? A what? A hardware wallet? I wouldn't even know what that is. Oh, uh, okay. Well, your, 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 um, Trust wallet is a software wallet. It runs on a, on a phone. It's only a software. That's and in a in a hardware wallet, you have a separate device in which is forking with your software mm -hmm. on your computer on your phone. Right. And this software on your phone and computer has connection to the internet. Sorry. And, and this this connection normally is very secure encrypted, uh -huh. and only this tool. Instances, devices, bought with big data. And it's a very safe on the, yeah. It's very safe for for bigger amounts. It's it's like your your safe the hardware wallet, no? For no. Okay, um and, and what what is your experience? 
uh, experience using Bitcoin. We're very good. I mean, it saved me during this pandemic, pandemic fee, and uh, the ability to receive money from my sales. And then I went to a friend of yours, who was behind the camera, Chris, and he helped me change his cash, and I could operate like normal. Yeah. Uh, if I hadn't had that, that would have uh, put a lot more strain on our on the whole situation. So, well, uh, it saved me in many ways. And now we have a rubbish truck just out the front of the building here. Yeah, this is a noisy uh, place here. Some of the problem in Latin America. Yeah. You are paying the silent place. You are sitting here. Oh, it's good place of you. And then they come and yeah. make a lot of noise. Okay. And um, what do you think about crypto in five years? Well, the way they're pushing forward. It's very uncertain on what I can see what's going to happen because there's a big uh, war going on, literally, even in the financial side of things. It's all part of this Agenda 2030. They want to uh, get everybody tied down on a just seen being, see being, things yeah. that have been based it to the colors. Yeah. yeah. So that's their end goal. And I don't know if they're going to try to destroy all other cryptos in order to install their preferred digital money digital money in so um i i mean you can't put all the air to one basket so as much as i like cash bitcoins and what i've learned is the only one that is for the people uh from the people and for the people um so therefore i've chosen to put some eggs in there and then other eggs and and different uh, denominate i uh, currency and seen cash but my highest priority is to retain cash because that's freedom and um, no not not true because the central bank or the national bank with um offering with the plotting just paper money theft uh, has the decision is this if this paper money is valid is legal or not with Bitcoin, there's no one people, no one instancing instance which uh, can forbid uh, the Bitcoin. Okay, you you are free of use, and then if you don't accept use, no problem. There is a big risk. You accept Bitcoin. Even just that I, I could find another one, but if the if the money from the from the local money or euro or dollar that the central bank said, oh no, this money is not valid anymore this is poorly burnt the favor like it was in india and five six years ago i'm just saying if this is the risk if the lowest has if the let's, let's, let's just say a, a guy called roger he says well i don't want to have a cell phone this if people need to speak to me i live just over there in the corner i don't even want to have a cell phone so what does he do he doesn't want to have a cell phone there's no cash anymore so he has no way to buy stuff or sell stuff. Uh, what I like is pulling into the petrol station. I just hand 200 pesos. He drops some petrol in my tape. I'm gone. It's so fast. There's not a, I'm not building up a queue behind me, actually. The moment he pulls the, the fuel thing out of my tank, I'm already busy rolling forward to make room for the next guy. So he's fast. I like the speed of test. And I like to see it surviving. I like new things coming out, but they should always fall under the umbrella of freedom and uh, voluntary association. See, governments are into fourth. Voluntary association means two parties who choose to do this as for each other. Um, I understand with bigger amounts taking two minutes or, or ten minutes, whatever, to make a transaction. It's not a big deal. But... For all these, hey, have a tip. You know, I walk down to Sewer Beach, somebody says, oh, can you give me something? I'm really hungry or whatever. If I want to give them 50 pesos, I can just reach into my pocket, grab a couple of coins. Here you go, buddy. But just don't ask me every day. And then I move on. I don't have to stand there and take up 10 minutes of my time trying to get it from my wallet to his wallet and all that. So that's, that's what I love about when they added freedom. Yeah. And nobody tells me how much of that stuff I'm allowed to save. 
but you don't have full control about the money. I know. I mean, on the US one dollar, it's got the Illuminati sign. So I know they and they print and they create inflation all that. It's not perfect, but I'm just saying I would hate to see cash disappear because then they'd really got. Then we are really in danger. I think even if Bitcoin is a a very libertarian kind of thing on the on the earth, you know, we we need to have in the digital world. Yeah, but then we need to have cash as well. Yeah, yes, and the film. Yeah. But what what is in your uh, opinion the use of Bitcoin in this area in Susua Kabaretsan? Are there a lot of people, a lot of extranjeros? Como se llama en, en inglés? Foreigners. Foreigners. Gringos, they call it. Uh, gringos are the gringos from Gringoland, yeah. No, we're all called gringos. Yeah, 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 I know it, but I'm not a gringo. Uh, okay, uh, how is the use of the foreigners by, uh, from Bitcoin and other... There's a, few that are, there's a few that are... Yeah, it's more the foreigners that you're going to find that are into the Bitcoin from what I've experienced in Sisu of Chabaretta anyway. Uh, it's very, very rare and that I bump into a Dominican who even understands uh, a little bit about it like myself. And that's only a little bit I understand. So um, they are so used to cash. I actually see it as a positive thing. Um, uh, maybe not everybody would agree with me, but this would be one of the last places where they're going to succeed forcing people onto a digital thing. I mean, you go out in the countryside. I mean, you see little pickups with a, a box on the back full of chicken and, and people, they buy a live chicken, they chop the head off and then they start plucking it there and then they give the guy a couple of hundred pesos and they get a, a, a freshly plucked chicken. I mean, I just know the guy running that chicken wagon, he ain't going to be getting a telephone out and doing this whole digital thing in a hurry. When I know, what, what, after I've learned about the Dominicans' mentality and culture and what they are keen and not keen, most of them, to learn about, they don't want to change. They like things, so it's, it's like they always eat chicken and rice in general and or specific meals. And if you try to introduce some kind of special dish to them, yeah, they'll try it, but... Next day, they'll go straight to that Commodore and they'll buy their uh, pork and rice or beef and rice, whatever, or chicken, a lot of chicken they eat. You know, they're, they're not easily switched to something new. They, they, like, they like their way, and um, that has two sides to it, that stubbornness. When it comes to, like, the scandemic, we saw them go back to normal very quick because... When they want to go to the beach, to the river, they go, even if there's a lockdown. They're not politically correct, mostly like all the sheep around the world I saw during the scandemic, you know, that locked themselves in their homes and they did what the authorities told them to do, like lame sheep, you know. So, um, yeah. So some countries are going to roll this whole digital thing faster than others, but I know like Scandinavia, where I used to live for five years before coming here, you know, Last time I went there, people were paying the the bus conductor or the train conductor. He just came up, they handed the cell phone, beep, you know. Everything's so automated. Um, it's completely any different down here. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's what one good thing is that the government is weak. The government, the, 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 the mayor, the local administration is weak and if they have uh, things or if they want things which are not popular they have a big problem to, to force it well I would rather call them corrupt <laughs> well that corruption has two sides to it you see it. sometimes they will stick to cash because that's in their favor yeah. or they'll stick to certain systems that wouldn't go well in other countries because it's in their favor there's other things they're making more money out of that relies on on the old way staying in place. You know, so, um, yeah. Okay, then thank you for the interview, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Thiel. You're welcome. I hope this uh, enlightened somebody. At least uh, you can hear uh, from the expert here how to, to go about doing things, and um, I wish you all the best.
ein World Channel. Wenn euch das Video gefallen hat, macht einen Daumen hoch, abonniert den Kanal und bleibt uns gewogen. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Tschüss. Tschüss. Thank you.